let's first of all look at assessment-based management. So once we've got a room prep for treatment, we can now identify how extensive that infestation is. Is the infestation localized just around the bed area or has the infestation spread beyond that so that there are harborages, say, behind the baseboards or around the window and door moldings, maybe behind electrical outlets or behind books, bookcases, that sort of thing. So as we look around and we assess this crime scene, we can decide how extensive our apprehend barrier placement really needs to be. If we can see that the infestation is really localized around the bed, then we can safely simply do primary barriers around the area where the people spend the time, okay? However, if that, that infestation has spread beyond the bed, we can put secondary barriers between the suspected harborage and the people so that when bed bugs emerge immediately from the harborage, they're going to cross a barrier. So secondary barriers for medium to high level infestations, primary barriers only if you've got low level infestations where it's localized around the bed and the other living room furniture, for example. And here's how to apply. So we're gonna remove the mattress because Apprehend is not labeled for mattresses, but we're gonna treat everything else. So in this case, we have a bed without a box spring. It's just one of these simple bed frames. And we're going to apply Apprehend barriers everywhere where you see one of these white lines. So we can go around the legs of the bed so that any bed bugs approaching the bed from away from the bed have to cross a barrier if they climb up the legs. We're gonna put a barrier around the outside perimeter of the bed frame and also around the inside perimeter. That means that even if there's a bed bug hidden in that screw hole in the middle of the bed there that we didn't see when, before we vacuumed, when that bed bug needs to take a blood meal, it has to cross one of those barriers. It's gonna cross that inner perimeter barrier before it can get to the human. So we've got that covered. We're gonna go around the back of a headboard. And again, there may be bed bugs lodged behind that metal bracket, but as long as we've got a perimeter of apprehend sprayed around that entire back perimeter of the headboard, there's no way that bed bug can get to the human for a blood meal without first crossing the barrier. But again, if you can see bed bugs in that, in that bracket, you can suck them up with a vacuum cleaner before you start and then place the perimeter barrier. You can also see the perimeter barrier here around the external perimeter of the bed frame and around the legs. If we've got box springs, it's the same thing. We can put primary barriers around the stapled area where the, the dust cover is attached to the frame of the box spring. This means that any bed bugs that are inside that cavity or lodging between the staples, as they often do, of that dust cover, have to cross a barrier when they emerge from their harborage. We'll also place perimeter barriers around the side perimeter of a box spring or, and around the top perimeter before replacing the mattress. In this way, we can be sure that any bed bugs infesting that box spring have to cross a barrier to get to the blood meal. Again, we'll remove any bed bugs with a vacuum if we see them present. Same principle with furniture. Here's a sofa. Remove the cushions, spray the internal perimeter of that seating area so that any bed bugs hiding deep down in the crack still have to cross that barrier when they're seeking their blood meal. And then also around that dust cover area using the same principle as the, as the box spring. You can also apply barriers around the sides of the cushions before replacing them. That way, when the person is sat on the sofa, a bed bug has to cross a barrier before it can get to them to take a blood meal. And now we can look at some secondary barriers. And these are the areas where bed bugs may have moved in a larger level infestation. So we can go along the top of a baseboard so that bed bugs lodging behind the baseboard, if they go up, they have to cross a barrier whether they go up the wall or back down the baseboard. So we'll overlap that area so that we include about an inch of the wall and an inch of the baseboard area. Now you can see that this application on the left hand side is on a hardwood floor. Now Apprehend is a serious slipping hazard if it's sprayed on hard flooring, whether that's tile or vinyl or hardwood. So we don't recommend you spray the floor with Apprehend. Much better to use a dust product at that level. But on the tops of the baseboards, you're good to go. 
Same thing with uh, crown molding. If you go along that interface there, even in a situation where you have these false ceilings, you can spray the barrier so that any bed bugs from inside that ceiling cavity have to cross that barrier at the top of the, the wall and crown molding interface before they can get to their blood meal. So that's a very good barrier to, to place if you suspect that that's activity on the other side of a, of a floating ceiling or a false ceiling. We can also go around these sort of like chair rails at mid height up the wall if we suspect that there's activity behind them, but only if we suspect activity, it's not necessary otherwise. We have an extension wand which helps you get up to these higher levels and the lower levels. You only need to use that just to prevent stooping and reaching. Under normal circumstances, you'll use the usual grip of the gun and press the button with your, with your thumb. So the extension arm is an optional extra. It can help if you get a lot of heavy infestations where you have to do high and low applications. It makes life a lot easier. If we suspect activity around light fittings, um, electrical outlets and vents and things, it's easy to spray an apprehend barrier on the wall around those areas. And then any bed bugs that are lodging inside those still, again, have to cross that barrier to get the blood meal. Mostly these barriers are invisible, but you may find that on, on gloss paint surfaces, it is visible as a sort of like an oily residue. Now, these should be left in place by, by your client, but can be removed very easily with even one of those disinfectant wipes or, or a simple um, spray cleaner for the bathroom or kitchen and a damp cloth. Very easy to remove, but obviously they're not doing their job if they're removed too soon. So we want them to stay uh, in place, these barriers, until we can clear the, the, the home of a bed bug infestation and we're sure that the, the apprehend has fully done its job and the bed bugs have been eradicated, then any visible barriers can easily be removed by the homeowner. So it's important to, to let them know that even if they can see this slight oily residue on some surfaces that they should leave it there for the time being until you can be sure that the, the product has had its full effect. So let's conclude with a summary of what assessment-based management means for bed bug control. First, we need to inspect the property to determine the level of infestation. Is it low, hardly spread at all, medium, some spread of the population beyond the bed and seating areas, or is it high? Are there bed bugs all over the place? We're going to adjust our treatment according to what we find. First, we must vacuum the visible bed bugs, eggs and shed skins. This is going to enable us to apply the apprehend barriers to a clean surface and remove all of those bed bugs from the scene immediately to reduce the impact for the customer when they return after your treatment. We'll apply the apprehend barriers according to infestation level and then return after 30 days to confirm eradication. If for any reason you find live activity after 30 days, that would trigger a retreat, but that should only really happen in about 10% of cases.